This is a British warship in 1918. It's painted in this dizzying pattern of alternating black and white diagonal lines, which frankly look more like a Call of Duty skin than a real warship design. But the thing is, this is a real warship design. So what is up with it? Like, why all of these crazy lines? Well, it's camouflage. This design is known as Dazzle Camouflage, and it's actually one of the smartest dumb ideas in military history. It was originally developed, or at least accredited to, the artist and graphic designer Norman Wilkinson, who, let's be honest, was probably high off shrooms when he came up with the idea. I mean, look at this shit. Like, how is this supposed to be camouflaged? It's like one of those spot the main character memes that you see online, except it's actually funny. But it's not as ridiculous as it looks. Time for some history. You see, the Triple Entente, also known as World War I's good guys, had a little problem with the German Navy during the war. If you took history in school, like I did, <laughs> You might remember that the British had this OP fleet of ships and had conquered half of the game map and established peaceful colonies all around the world. So the Germans who weren't cool with the British knew that if they were to have any chance against them in a war, they would have to get some ships. And so in the years prior to the war, Germany started building loads of ships, which turned out to be useless because they were still using level 1 wood while the British were out there building these things. Eventually, the Germans copied this design known as the Dreadnought and they got pretty close to having as many Dreadnoughts as the British fleet. But you can't compete against the richest empire in the world, I guess. But the Germans were better than the British at something, and that was building submarines and torpedoes. The German U-boat submarines sank over 6,000 Allied war and commercial ships between 1914 and 1918. And so the British soon got pretty tired of getting spawn killed in the ocean and decided they had to camouflage their ships. But of course, camouflaging a ship isn't as easy as camouflaging soldiers on land, since these ships were, well, you know... And this is where Dazzle Camouflage came in. Now, unlike traditional camouflage, its purpose was not to conceal, obviously, but to confuse. The idea is that the mess of contrasting lines would make it difficult for the enemy to calculate the ship's position, direction, and velocity, causing them to miss their target entirely. Now, of course, this only worked because these German submarines only had a very small time window in which they could poke out their periscopes to make all of these necessary calculations in preparation for an attack, because otherwise they would be spotted. So, as you can see from this diagram, which I definitely didn't steal from Wikipedia, the submarine would have positioned itself ready for an ideal attack close to their target, only to realize that their target was actually much further away, which made it more complicated. This picture further illustrates why this technique was effective. Tell me, where is the ship on the left heading to? Is it heading in this direction? This one maybe? Which side is it even facing? Although the camouflage makes the ship more conspicuous, it disrupts the outline of its most recognizable structures. And so it makes it hard to judge where the ship is facing. The idea was originally inspired by animals in nature, such as zebras or giraffes. The stripes or spots in these animals make them appear like a mess of colors to a predator from far away, which then makes it difficult to hunt them down. 
In fact, having said this, it should be mentioned that this wasn't actually Wilkinson's original idea. It was originally conceived and suggested by zoologist John Graham Kerr, who suspected that the same techniques that evolution had applied to nature could be used in warfare. But of course, he was a zoologist after all, and so the British Admiralty thought that he was a weirdo and didn't listen to him until Wilkinson proposed the same idea. All right, so now we know how this came to be. But did it work? Well, the short answer is we don't really know. According to a 2011 experiment, dazzle camouflage would have only been effective if the ships were traveling at much faster speeds than they were traveling at in 1918. And even then, the degree of confusion or error in the observed speed, position and velocity of these ships was only of about 7%. So in paper, all of this is complete bullshit. But was it really? Statistics from the war tell us that Dassault ships were attacked on more sailings than regular ships, for obvious reasons. But in these attacks, only 43% of Dassault ships were sunk, compared to 54% of normal ships. If you ask the Americans, you'll get even better statistics. Out of all of the Dassault ships that they ever produced during their involvement in the war, Zero were sunk by the enemy. Then again, I don't know if you can trust the Americans because... However, the fact remains that both countries thought that it was useful because they used it again in World War II. But the truth is that too many variables come into play in deciding whether this was done or not. So I guess that we'll never know the real answer. Should we care? Well, probably not, because helpful or otherwise, this thing still looks freaking amazing. So anyway, there you have it. Now, as always, I hope you've learned something, although I doubt it'll be useful. But if you did make it this far into the video, mad respect. Thanks for watching this episode of Pointless History. If you like what you see, please consider supporting the channel by dropping a like, leaving a comment and subscribing for more random facts. And if you're still curious, you can also go check out my Shower Thoughts series where I try to explain I don't really understand. And yeah, I'll see you soon. Peace.